Look homeward, angel. The book is divided into three parts, with a total of 40 chapters. The first 90 pages of the book deal with an early biography of Gant's parents, very closely based on the actual history of Wolf's own mother and father. It begins with his father, Oliver's, decision to become a stone cutter after seeing a statue of a stone angel. Part 1 The first marriage of Oliver Gant, father of the protagonist, Eugene, ends in tragedy, after which Oliver becomes an alcoholic. The battle with alcoholism remains the major struggle of his life. He eventually remarries, builds a new house, and starts a family. However, the couple is beset with tragedy, their first daughter dies of cholera in infancy, while two more babies die at birth. In the wake of these losses, a destabilized Oliver is sent to Richmond for a cure with little success. He returns home to abuse his family, at times threatening to kill his second wife Eliza, Eugene Gant's mother. The couple remain together, however, and have a total of six surviving children, the oldest born in 1894. Eugene's birth follows a difficult labor during which his father, Oliver, is drunk downstairs. Nonetheless, Oliver Gant forms a special bond with his son, Eugene, from early on. He begins to get his drinking under control, with less frequent occasional binges, although his marriage becomes strained as Eliza's patience with him grows thinner. By the fifth chapter they are no longer sleeping in the same bedroom. Despite his flaws, Oliver Gant is the family's keystone. He reads Shakespeare, has his daughter Helen read poetry, and keeps great fires burning in the house as symbols of warmth for the family. His gusto is the source of energy and strength for the family. Even his raging diatribes against his wife sustain the tempo of domestic life. When Eugene is six years old and starting to school, Oliver journeys to California for the last time, returning home to the joy of his family. Eugene's early education includes several clashes with teachers but he has a love of books and is bright, much to the pride of both his parents. His mother continues to baby him, unwilling to see him grow up. She does not cut his hair, even though he is teased about its length by the other boys. Part 2 Eugene wins a writing contest and is chosen to attend Altamont Fitting School. The school is run by John and Margaret Leonard. Here, Eugene begins his classical education. His mother, Eliza's, boarding house, Dixieland, is paid off and she continues investing. Eugene's siblings are traveling and experiencing both success and failure in their various undertakings. Oliver sells the stone angel to the owner of a local brothel. Eugene is ashamed by his first few sexual experiences. He is working at his brother, Ben's, newspaper while continuing to study Shakespeare and romantic poetry. World War I is underway. Ben is diagnosed with lung cancer in Baltimore. Despite the Leonard's advice to wait, Eugene will attend UNC at Oliver's insistence. Part 3 Eugene begins his education at UNC as a teenage boy, alienated and out of place. He becomes the butt of practical jokes by the older fellow students. He works hard to become active in extracurricular activities including the debate club and philosophy association. After his freshman year, Eugene's summer back in Altamont is marked by him falling in love with a 21-year-old tenant, Laura James, at his mother's boarding house. Eugene became obsessed with Laura and at the end of the summer, she tells him that she is engaged to be married to a man in Norfolk, Virginia. Eugene falls into a funk which haunts him for another two years. W.O. undergoes radiation treatments at Johns Hopkins University Hospital in Baltimore because the Gant family operates with a conviction that only that medical institution was qualified to provide competent health care. When Wolf himself became ill in 1938, the family insisted he be sent to Baltimore to receive treatment at the only facility the Wolf family trusted. Eugene returns to UNC and becomes very involved in academic activities including serving as the editor of the school newspaper, the literary magazine, and the poetry publication. He joins a drama writer's seminar and achieves acclaim. 
His reputation on campus was a humorous eccentric which in turn made him funnier and more beloved. However, below this outward image was a young man who was intensely sensitive, lonely, and hyper-emotional. In the spring of 1918, his roommate unexpectedly died of heart disease, throwing Eugene into another funk. Then in the summer of 1918, Eugene worked at the shipyards at Norfolk, hoping to earn extra money for the upcoming school year, but instead turns into a nightmare with him living homeless and famished for most of the summer. After returning to UNC in the fall of 1918, he is summoned by his mother to come home immediately because brother Ben is in a near coma with pneumonia. Thomas Wolfe's biographer Elizabeth Knoll said Wolfe's description of Ben's death was the finest writing of his career. Eugene returns to UNC and completes his studies. His mentor, English professor Virgil Weldon, modeled after Wolfe's mentor Horace Williams, encourages Eugene to apply to Harvard for graduate studies. He tells his mother of his plans, she begs him to remain in North Carolina and work for a newspaper. Eugene tells Eliza that he has a destiny elsewhere and that he cannot be boxed in by a small mountain town in North Carolina.